Ralph here. Welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this wonderful Wednesday here in Connecticut. Sun's out, freezing cold, everything is ice, but it is hot in here, man, with double C's flying. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got to get this up. My cleaning lady's coming any minute now, and uh, you don't want her. <laughs> she has a bit of an attitude. She does a great job, but I don't want her to know. Anyway, so here we are. You saw the thumbnail. Who has the most compression? Who knows? I'll give you a criteria, and uh, we'll take it from there. But who knows? Anyway, you saw my number one of my number one, Adolf Sherbaum in the, in the um, uh, thumbnail. But anyway, uh, let me honk a little bit, and we'll talk about compression, the masters of compression. Life's good. Hellacious. Compressed double C's. And a little bit, what was that? That was uh, Arbor number three. Give me some barbed wire, aces. <laughs> anyway, compression. Now, let's talk about compression. What constitute compression? Guys, the most compression you can build up in your physiology, okay, using the tongue as the, the uh, main lever to control it, okay? Which will take the most stress off your lips, okay? That's my criteria. I think it's a pretty good one. Guys, if you are compressing, you are not compressing correctly. You are not beating up your lips, okay? So, right off the bat, somebody like, Louis Armstrong, especially the late Louis Armstrong, wasn't compressing as much as he could. Now, a lot of those scars are from different things. There's no question about it, but played too much bad mouthpieces the whole nine yards. But the fact of the matter is, <laughs> those are some mangled chops, okay? Uh, I did a two videos recently on the greatness of Wayne Bergeron, and tremendously great. But as great as his results are, I believe he's working too hard. The compression isn't completely right. Eric Maischero, another one, just tremendous, tremendous trumpet player. Mangled chops. I mean, I'm going to do a video on him possibly tomorrow, okay? Um, so again, who's getting the most results, the tone, power, range, and endurance, okay, without beating up your chops? Now, here's the thing. An orchestral player like Herseth, for the sake of argument, is not playing the same gig that Horace Fisher is. So he's not going to be beating up his chops because he's not playing double C's and above. Okay, so there's a lot to can... But we're just talking about compression. Okay, getting the ultimate results without strain. Okay, as you know, my favorite is Adolf Scherbaum. Okay, he's 5'4", guys. This is a tiny, tiny little guy. Okay, and the tone, power, range, and endurance that this guy created with ease, it was extraordinary, extraordinary. Um, we had a thing months ago, a year ago, whatever, about who had the best Michael Haydn. I think it's hands down him. Okay, not musically. I think Mark Maurice had much more versatility, virtuosity, and whatnot than um, Sherbaum did. But Maurice did not have the compression. 
that Sherebaum has. Now, as legend goes, and I've told you this before, somehow, uh, back in the 50s, 60s, something like that, Sherebaum figured out a way to uh, calibrate the amount of compression inside his mouth when he went above a high C. Okay? The calibration that they came up with was that of an automobile tire. Guys, I don't, look, I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know. But guys, he was compressing. He was compressing big time. Okay? Now, I put a handful of my favorite athletes up who are multiple compressors, get an extraordinary strength, flexibility, endurance out of tiny little bodies. Okay? Alan Iverson, Bruce Lee's my favorite, you know that. Um, anyway. Um, and my guy Pavel with the kettlebells. Guys, if you don't think these kettlebells work, there's a picture of him, and I'll try to get it up sometime. Picture of Pavel, literally, and he talks about air compression all the time. He said Bruce Lee, of all the weight people, martial artists and everything, had the most compression. Okay? A little guy getting extraordinary feats of strength. There's a picture of him blowing up a hot water bottle. Now, don't try this at home. Guys, first of all, if it breaks, which Pavel has done it dozens of times, it flies everywhere. He's wearing goggles while he's doing it. Also, if he doesn't get it and he lets go and that goes back into his lungs, he's dead. Don't do it. Okay? But the compression that this guy was building up was extraordinary. Again, we're talking athletes here. And guys, this is where I'm taking my stuff with Jerry over into the athletic endeavors. Okay? So I am also going to go horse fishing. Um, another tiny little guy. Tiny little guy. But you heard those recordings, and they're not, you know, all technology perfect recordings either. But they're extraordinary. The tone, power, range, and endurance that he was getting, okay, was great. Harry James, the tone, power, range, and endurance with no strain. No strain whatsoever. We talked about his false teeth and all that sort of stuff. He wasn't straining. He wasn't pressing. Extraordinary, the compression he was getting. Maynard, he was getting some compression, but he's a little too beat up. We've talked about this. He's working too hard. Mangled lips. Okay. Maurice, incredible, incredible stuff. But, I'm, again, when we're talking pure compression, and if I had to go trumpet player, my favorite trumpet player, it would absolutely be Maurice over Sherbach. But when we're talking compression, I'm going with Sherbach. Um, Melbourne oils, not as much. It's very, very hard to compress on a big bathtub mouthpiece. Very hard. Now, they do it very well, Mel. Uh, Phil Smith was another one. Another one. They do a beautiful job of compressing. Now, remember, they're not doing double C jobs. So all they have to do is compress up to a certain point. But it's very, very hard to compress um, on a big mouthpiece. Arturo Sandoval. Incredible player. Not compressing, man. Not compressing on that mouthpiece. He's getting it different ways. He's getting it along the lines of uh, Wayne Bergeron. Working too hard. Mangled lips, the whole nine yards. Uh, the orchestral players today, I can't put one in there that has great compression. They're great players on C trumpets and big mouthpieces, but they're not, they're not compressing. Uh, Herb Smith is in Rochester. Uh, Bataillon is. But he's gotten into some big mouthpieces, too. I've heard a couple things of them that uh, they're, they're terrific, but... Uh, uh, I'm just going down a list here, man. I, I mean, Doc Severinsen. Doc Severinsen used compression, but he was too tight. Too tight. Tighten up the corners, relax the middle. He wasn't completely right. But he was compressing for sure. For sure. Um, Harry Glantz. Compressive. The ease of play. Not a double C guy, but for what he was doing, he was absolutely compressive. Vacchiano was not compressive. Tremendous, tremendous trumpet player, not compressing. Uh, John Ware was compressing. Once again, he was even smaller than uh, Benjamin Margolin. And uh, well, I, I can talk about Benjamin Margolin. He's a Garavik man, kettlebell guy. That was king of compression. King of compression. You heard, that, you heard that lick I put on a while ago. King 
of compression. Yeah, so my, uh, anyway, that's that. I'm sure I'm missing some, and I'm sure you feel some should be out of the list and we replace it with other guys. Again, we're talking about compression, not virtuosity, not beauty of tone. <laughs> compression. All right? Let me hear what you think. Eat and drink fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Oops. My uh, cleaning lady just drove in the driveway. Love you all. Thank you.